So now that we have the makings of our game and we have some random elements moving along, we really need to include some consequences and rewards to make this game work. So in this we're going to focus on the uh, consequence side of thing and the final video we'll get to the rewards. So what really we want to have happen is two main things with this game. One, if the cat gets the cheesy poofs, you win or you get a point. And two, if the cat gets hit by the ball, then that's the game over. So that's where we're at right now. So really quick, I'm just going to go ahead and paint two new backdrops. So that way we have one for winning and we have one for losing. And before I do that, I want to make sure that when I start my game, it locks in this blank backdrop for right now. So I'm going to go ahead and go into Looks and choose Switch Backdrop to Backdrop 1 when the green flag is clicked. It doesn't matter which sprite you put that on, but you don't want to contradict it in other sprites because that makes things go weird. So we just want one, switch backdrop to backdrop one. And I'll show you how we get the backdrop switching when we get to that point. So now I'm going to paint two new ones. And I'm going to make it super simple. I'm just going to type game over. And then one more. You win. All right. And then the last thing I want to have happen here, I know those are pretty basic, but it'll work for now, is that when the game is over when they win, I want all the sprites to hide as well. So what that means is if I have them hide after the game is over, I need them to show up once the game begins. So then I also need to make sure and go into the show section as well. So going to make sure that the ball and the cat show up. The cheesy puffs already hide right away, so we're just going to make sure we need them to to stop when the time comes. All right, so what do we need to have happen here? When the cat touches the ball, we want it to be game over. So that's gonna include something called broadcasting, but we've gotta to build to that point first. So when the green flag is clicked, I'm gonna do another section of code with this so that way things stay kind of clean and I can pick things apart. We're gonna to need to do a forever because the cat's not going to be touching the ball or the cheesy poofs right away. So we need to make sure we have a forever because otherwise if that the condition of the cat touching the ball is not met right when the green flag is clicked, then our code may not work. So we want to use a forever. And then we're going to use an if then. So the if then has this little diamond block. And we actually use a couple different ways to fill that. One of them is our operators. So that's math type stuff. And the other one is sensing. So for instance, touching and different things like that when certain keys are pressed. So in this case, it's going to be all about touching. If the cat is touching the ball, we want the game to be over. And then I'm going to duplicate this if the cat is touching the cheesy puffs. That's going to be a win. So in this case, we're going to bring out our broadcast. And so that is actually an event. And a broadcast is just an unseen message that tells the sprites things to do. So it's a good way to coordinate and time things out. And then you can name the messages whatever you want. So in this case, I'm going to need to. And so when these conditions happen, it's going to broadcast the message. So in this case, it's going to be end game. And win game. Okay. So now we need to build the conditions for what happens when we win. So when we win, when we touch the cheesy poofs, that wins the game. So when that happens, we want all the characters to receive that message. So when the cat receives win game, we just want it to hide. Same for the ball. When the ball receives win game. We also just want it to hide. The cheesy puffs will be a little trickier. And here's why. The cheesy puffs have the show wrapped in this forever script. That means forever it's going to keep doing that. So even if it hides when the message is broadcast, once it comes around to this part of the script again, it's going to show up. And we don't want that. So here's what we do for the cheesy puffs. 
when it receives win game, we actually want to have it hide. And then we're actually going to want to use in control this stop all. And we're going to choose stop other scripts in the sprite. So that way, that'll stop it where it's at, and it'll be all good to go. And then the last thing that needs to happen is our backdrop needs to switch. So to keep this all clear, I'm going to just do backdrop related script in the backdrop. I'm going to go here, and then I'll build these both in right away. When it receives end game, and when it receives win game, when it receives end game, I need it to switch the backdrop to the second one because that was our game over. And then when it receives win game, switch it to backdrop three. So let's just double check to make sure you got that right. Yep, game over is two, you win is three. All right, and then we also need to go back and then build in what happens on the end game to these two. So same here, it's just gonna be hide. And that's gonna be the same on the ball too. And you can just actually drag script over to another sprite to copy it. So same there. And then with the cheesy puffs, once again, we gotta make sure that it's in the same boat with the stopping the scripts. And that's end game. All right, so now we should be ready to test this out. Stop it, start it. We're good. So now we're looking for the cheesy puffs. And there they are. Boom, I touched them. The game is over, I win. Now, let's say I get hit by the ball. Game is over and I lost. So those are how the broadcasts work and that is some simple game functionality to ours. The next tutorial we'll look at variables so we can actually have a score involved in this instead of just ending the game when we get the cheesy pumps.